All of us have been wounded, hurt, or neglected by other people. But have you ever been wounded by God's people, people in the church? Well, if so, you're not alone. Even Billy Graham's daughter feels your pain. Take a look. Anne Graham Lotz has been proclaiming God's Word around the world for 30 years. Her beloved father, Billy Graham, has preached to more people than anyone in history. Like her dad, Anne is also a best-selling author. And her signature events, called Just Give Me Jesus, draw people by the thousands. In her book, Wounded by God's People, Anne shares the most hurtful pains from her past and offers advice about healing the wounds of a broken heart. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Ann Graham Lotz. It's great to have you here, oh, it's Anne. so good to be here, thank you. You know, people would expect, as Billy's daughter, that you would be treated like royalty wherever <laughs> you go, and there would never be a problem, especially in the church. But the book you've written called Wounded by God's People is about just that, being hurt in the church by the people of God. That has happened to you. And not just people in the church, but believers. And yes. I think the reason those wounds hurt the most is because they're people that you have trusted, mm -hmm. you feel safe with, you've, you've come to love. Yeah. And then when they reject you or betray you or slander you or lie to you, um, it hurts more. Yeah. So we've had several experiences like that, uh, two with major church experiences, where after each one, my husband and I left. Uh, and so for a year, we didn't go to church. Um, yes. And that's twice in our lives where we yeah. were what I call a believer in exile. You've just been hurt so bad, it's like you just can't stay there anymore. Talk about that a little bit, because that's not an uncommon happening, that someone is wounded in church and then is so deeply hurt. They're, they don't feel safe going anywhere. You know, it's amazing. And I think uh, George Barna has come out with his research showing that the majority of people who were in church or not in church today are not in church because they were hurt by somebody in the church. Mm. There are many believers in exile out there. Yeah. And yet when, when that happened to us, it didn't damage my faith. It, it made me feel actually closer to God because mm -hmm. Jesus came to his own and his own didn't just rejected receive him, him, but they yes. rejected him, they crucified him. Yeah. So he understands that kind of pain. And I felt that it caused me to love the Lord more and it made me want to know God for who he is, not as people reflect him sometimes, because sometimes the church doesn't reflect him. As, they give a very tarnished reflection yes. of him. And I wanted to know him as he is, and then I wanted to make him known, Terry, in a way that would draw people to him, not drive them away. You know, they say that the things that hurt us in life make us bitter or better. Mm -hmm. And you say that wounded people are wounders. Yeah. So how, how do we work through things like this? How did you? Well, I think when you're wounded, um, if you refuse to forgive, mm -hmm. if you retaliate by withholding your forgiveness or are vengeful in some way, then it's like drinking the poison, hoping the other person dies. You know? yeah. <laughs> it, it wounds your spirit, actually. Then your spirit sort of shrivels. Yes. But if when you're wounded, if you would bring it to the cross, if you tell God yeah. you hurt, tell him you're angry and, and you can cry, but then you've got to make the decision and it's a choice to forgive the person. Yeah and then receive God's forgiveness even for some of your feelings. And then reach out to the person, do something to bless them, and your spirit rises above it. What I've had to guard is that when I'm wounded, the, the natural reaction is to hurt back. You did that to me, then I'm gonna get back to you. You do something worse to me, it I'm gonna come back to you. It just is a visceral you know? reaction. And so you have it? to be very careful because yes. then it begins a cycle of pain that I, I trace in the book. And, uh, Hagar's life, and mm -hmm. she was the woman who was a slave in Abraham and Sarah's household. She had Abraham's baby, and then, anyway, there's just a, a series of woundings in there, but where she became a wounder, she was wounded, she became a wounder. It was just, yeah. and, and Sarah, the same thing, until it just spiraled and spiraled and goes nowhere. Yeah. And so we have to break that cycle. What do you do when the church has, I mean, here you are, people have such high expectations of you, Anne. I know you've experienced the pain of being judged by people, criticized by people. You had a son who went through a divorce. Talk a little bit about what happened and how you handled that. Well, you know, I handle it by just going to the Lord. I, I love the Psalms, and there are yes. times when David cries out, and he was wounded mm -hmm. by people of faith also. Yeah. Um, and the Bible is a wonderful source of comfort and encouragement, and sometimes conviction, because mm -hmm. at one point, uh, someone wounded me so devastatingly. It was cruel what she did. And I was stunned. I, I couldn't get over it. And so as I began to pray, I thought, you know, was there something that I did that provoked that? 
And over time, it wasn't immediately, but God revealed to me an attitude in my life that I had used as I dealt with her that I think must have built up in her over time until she just exploded in this uh, wounding way. And I had to tell God I was sorry for my attitude, tell her I was sorry. And there was a sort of a formal reconciliation, but there's not a warm relationship. But, mm -hmm. uh, but that'll, I pray that'll come in time. Yeah. Sometimes things take time to get over. <laughs> so some of it is having that attitude of search me and know my That's right. heart, my That's thoughts. That's what David said in Psalm 139. You know, he had, he had the same thing. He wanted God to search his heart to see if there was some wicked way. Had he done something to provoke some mm -hmm. of the antagonism towards him? It took you four years to write this book. And even in the writing of the book, you went through a hurtful situation. Is there one time that you were wounded that really stands out as the thing? Is it the, the, the situation you just mentioned? or? What stands out as maybe the hardest thing you had to deal with? You know, I, um, I sort of put them in the past, Harry. Yeah. I don't, they don't stand out to me because they're under the blood. Amen. I think when, when we were rejected by a church, we'd been members there 15 years, I thought we'd die there. My children yeah. were baptized there. I taught a big class there. And when they voted on a Sunday morning to remove my husband from his leadership positions yeah. and rejected us to the sound of applause, that, that mm. uh, is a, an amazing thing. But walking to the parking lot with that sound ringing in my ears, I knew I wanted to know God as he was, not like that church reflected him. <laughs> and I knew I wanted to make him known in a way that other yeah. people would love him. So, so this is something to learn about wounds. God can allow them because they can bring a blessing. Yes. If you'll bring it to God, he, the wounds in my life, I look back and he, he moved us from that church into another one or he'll redirect my ministry into a different area. And so sometimes the wounding and my response to it is what he uses to direct me somewhere where he wants me to go. So there can be blessing. For, and you know, the cross is a good example, yes, isn't it? Yes. Because Jesus was wounded in an ultimate way. But look at the glory and the, the resurrection yes. you know, of what he's won through the cross. So. And that's the takeaway of wounded by God's people is we can be whole, we can draw yes. closer to Him, can we can healed. know Him well. A, yes. In fact, a dear friend uh, told me that after the resurrection, when Jesus allowed His disciples to put His fingers and His nail prints in His side, He was showing them that wounds can heal quickly. Mm -hmm. And you can be healed of your wounds, but it's a, a journey. Word. It's a yeah. process. Well, we have to ask you quickly before I throw over to Pat, is your dad doing well? You know, he is. He'll be 95. November 7th, he's got the big My Hope project going. I encourage wow. everybody to be a part of it. It's going to be thrilling. Yeah, well, tell him we love him. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I you, will. Man. Great to have you here.